Backtracking a little bit to, I can't remember who you said it was, but you connected with someone who took downside to kind of like the next level. Oh, yeah, yeah. What was? Sloney or Paul Sloan. Okay. And then you said once he got involved. Yeah. That's when you started getting on festival circuits. Yeah, so which like Sloney, that. like the fucking tr- the the ace card was Sloney was that he was a promoter. Well, he kind of fell into the promoting thing because he got a, he kind of got pissed off at promoters. He started promoting. He was really good at promoting and putting on big festivals. And the thing that worked for us, so he we got the whole drum thing in that, and then he started booking shows, and he would get us on these big festivals because it was kind of like a barter with the other promoters over east. So it was fucking sick. We kind of got that like good edge and really gave us that good opportunity to get out there and actually, you know, at the time, like playing like Splendor and Blues and the Roots, like, mm. like what's this live hip hop stuff? The other thing though, that was good because that, and then that was the time when we got the, we signed to Hydro Funk, which was the Resin Dogs. The Resin Dogs were popping like live. They fucking had, because it was kind of live beats and stuff, and crew would see it. They were just, you know, they were like, "Yeah, man, we dig your shit, and you've got, you know, you've got the drum and drummer and the bass play live. Yeah, we we'll, we'll sign you, and we'll do your new record. We'll just land the giants, and yeah, and then I think with him on the, like, basically on the pulse of sort of getting us everything and planning our tour and stuff like that. Like that was basically when things started rolling for real. And we did, and we started actually, we did the, the like our first national tour and kind of played. The good thing about us is that we've always been about playing heaps of shows and that was kind of the promo, like live, come and mm. see us live. It's live hip hop, you know? That's the grassroots shit. That's the grassroots shit. Like we were, even like before the first tour, like, Sloney basically booked us every fucking thing. Like, we're supporting metal bands, punk bands, youth festivals. Like, like it, it got to a point where we were playing, like, sometimes two times, three times a week. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, we were playing heaps. It was out of control. I think a lot, all, of, a lot of acts would play three times a year. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, all of a sudden, and because he was a promoter and knew how to negotiate... All of a sudden, we had all this cake in the bank to actually just fund our, our whole tour. Like, we funded everything ourselves. Like, it was crazy. Wow, and that independent hustle shit. Yeah. So oh. he was really good with that. And, yeah, just logistically as well, knew how to kind of, yeah, basically, like, make it work for us so we weren't basically losing money. We could break even, but then the next tour we made money, and then after mm. that we're just making money. Sick. And then was this happening at the same time as you guys were getting pushed from Triple J? Yes. So land when Land the Giants landed and we signed to Hydro Funk and Hydro Funk did an awesome job as well with with their help as well. That's how the Triple J thing happened. And then it all worked in, in like as a snowball effect altogether. Like that machine we had was fucking sick. He and and the thing with Sloney was yeah, he promoted, he was a promoter. He picked bands. So he kind of knew, like, I know kind of what I'm doing because I'm promoting. I know what bands to pull, what people are listening to. I know how they're doing it. And then my ace card is that I'm a promoter. These promoters can't talk shit to me. Mm. <laughs> it was fucking killer. He was the perfect, like, thing for it. Can you recall... Uh- what was the single, your first single on the Jays? It was El Questra, I'm pretty sure. And then what, like Gifted when life. that? Gifted Life, I think. Can't remember. Yeah. Well, when at first, you know, basically when you first hit the Jays, like yeah. how much did that just catapult you guys into? It did, because you know, the, the difference back then is social media just didn't exist. So back then it was like, and then remember all the street mags and stuff, like mm. well, all that street press thing we were getting heaps of as well. So it was such a different game in terms of like marketing. Like, so, and he was just on, on it and just knew exactly what to do. And the big thing as well was, it, I mean, Triple J did help, but the support of local community radio, like 
everywhere made a massive difference as well, which a lot of people forget because, yeah, sure. I mean, Tr- Triple J does have a big listening shit, but when you're hitting like if because yeah, we were doing regional touring as well. Scotty and Opto used to do a massive amount of like radio interviews with all the local community radio stations. So that helped heaps because it's that grassroots thing. Mm. And people came to watch the show and then it was like then on our kind of second and third run um, national runs, we started just doing more capital bigger shows. So it was like just this snowball effect of people seen us before and we kind of recognized crew from like certain towns and shit. And then at which point, because I remember, like, I clearly remember, like, shit, I think I was, like, 19, 20, driving around in some piece of shit Ford or something, (laughs) burning the clutch out. And, like, the stereo didn't work, so I had to use the radio. Yeah. And that's how I would hear a lot of your stuff on air back then. And, I mean, obviously, then I fell off, you know, listening to radio and stuff. But then I guess I just wouldn't hear of downside much more after a certain period. You know, it might have been like two, three, four years. Yeah. yeah. And then I just wouldn't hear the name anymore. Is that, did you guys like put music on the back burner for a while? Yeah, what what, what happened is I think after the last record, which was All City, we, um, we basically like, we were still writing, but then... Shabazz and Scotty basically had kids. That was basically what happened. <laughs> yeah, and that'll it do it, it. It made it hard because um, and and then like as you get like when everyone gets older and you know they kind of start doing the family thing, it's like oh you know I can't just and you know now the doll's not as easy to be on. <laughs> Hunter wouldn't be too impressed nah, about that. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of key factors here that changed in terms of how the band worked and we kind of didn't adjust to it because we didn't know how to mm. like all of a sudden, Oh fuck, you know, well, especially, especially for the other boys, I'm like, oh, fuck, I've got a fucking kid. Fuck, I'm, I can't just kind of think of myself anymore. I've got to like, look after like the missus and the kid and kind of give them a bit of security here. Like, yeah, it's, it's getting to be hard now. <laughs> can't like the doll's not there anymore. Like you can't, you just can't do that. <laughs> mm. You get old and you're like, ah, oh, yeah time to it's not enough yeah it's time to grow up